5 o'clock. Just for the record, we have uh, could we, Jennifer, could I get you to introduce yourself and then we'll go. Yeah, hi, I'm Jennifer Adams and I live over um, just south of Clifton in Miami County. I'm Marilyn Lawyer. Um, mm -hmm. Carol Simmons. Okay. Carol Simmons and I'm here for Yale Springs News. Bob Welsh, I live in uh, Goldmill Court. Naomi Ewald, I live in the I will live in Willowfield, but on East Union. Oh, well, I'm Richard Thoth, the zoning inspector. Who oh, well, let's keep going. Going. <laughs> Colin. Yeah, yeah, Colin. 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 Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, those are for them. There's okay. two for each. And? Oh, I'm fiscal officer, Mark Bitz. Roger Sullivan. Chris Mucha. Okay. I'm the kind of trustee. Don Hollister, trustee. Cool. Road guy and cemetery yeah. secretary. Yeah. 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 Road yeah. supervisor. Okay. Yeah. Um, here. I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of August 16th. I haven't seen them. Do you have a copy in front of you? They're right here. Oh well. Okay. Maybe wait until next meeting. Yep. Okay. We'll, we'll wait until next meeting. Well, I can tell this is going to be quick. Uh, I didn't see that part. Yeah. Well, I would entertain a motion to approve payment of bills. Total of $58,870.15 from the general fund, $8,026.03 from the fire fund, $32,255.56 from the cemetery fund, $12,615.84 from EMS billing, $1,815.69. The total of road and bridge, $4,157.05. And I don't, payment. Oops. Sorry. I don't see any capital fund. I didn't Good. spend any of it. You mean the firehouse is done? I don't know about that, but I just don't have spending money from the capital fund. I was just trying to make a point that maybe for the first time. No, it's something else has not trickled in. Anyway. <clears throat> J Car's not fully paid. Uh, <laughs> I've listed the items. Do I hear a motion to approve payment of bills? Somewhere. I'll second that. Uh, Second, any discussion? We call the roll. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Uh, yes. Can I? Accept. Can I go back to this one? Oh. It's not going to change the amount, but as Collins' note says, why are we paying? Do we don't pay you any out of fire? Uh, you're right. He's but right. don't you want to do this one? <laughs> okay, no, I'll fix that. Thank you for um, catching that. Is that, that something we should change the motion? Or no. no, no. It's just the financial. The, the money's going it's out just, just the same. Yeah, it's, I just need it. an accounting error. Error. Colin, do you happen to know what the two sets of pleated air filters for Granger equipment get par four for air handlers here at the fire station? Okay. Um, do you know what the plan is for the the six additional sets of washable filters? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I think we should consider splitting 
to some extent the Mabeka bill because it does include our phone service and we're not paying anything for it under the general fund. Uh, Mr. Reacher? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, I did notice that and uh, I was going to propose a solution for the next meeting. Great minds. Great minds. Okay, <laughs> but what does that say about the apportionment? We pay this bill, but from one fund or two different funds? Look, it's covering all the phone and uh, data services for the building, so it should come from both general, I assume general, and so, fire. But it's not now. But, but not it's not now. now. Currently, now. it's coming from fire. So, That's do we want to vote on it this way or change it? Well, he's going to bring us a so we, solution. solution. Any adjustment would be the next one. Next one, yeah. Okay. So these are all going to be paid anywho. Yeah. 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 And, and since we're talking about really important things, my withholding for the state of Ohio went down five cents. <laughs> wow. To speak with the HR, take that <laughs> off. No, that, that, take that, that, that off the a, record. There was a change in the in the rate. There was uh, a change in the rate statewide. So, uh, thank you, thank you, elected representative. Apparently, mm -hmm. not yet. I think. I guess. <laughs> now I've already lost track. Have we called for a vote yet? No, we're about to. Okay. Uh, can we have the roll? Oh yeah, I did that. You did. But then it yeah. stopped with interruptions. Or not interruptions, but corrections. So we're unanimous. Everybody said yes, but Chris is totally talking. confused. Okay. So we have voted to approve payment of bills. Yes, we did. We just had some um, um, side conversation about some minor going changes. Going through correspondence. Uh, I'll read it, but as I read, if there's an item that you think ought to be on the agenda, speak up. Uh, MVRPC 2020 Annual Report, Ohio Power Siting Board, <coughs> copy of Kingwood Solar's entry, I think that should be under old business. Green County Public Health Board, 9-2 uh, meeting announcement, Otarma Update Magazine, Martin Marietta Fraud Awareness Letter, Notice from MedAccount Management. Note from Auditor Monteith. Letter from Citizens to Preserve Mills Lawn Green Space. Probably new business. We haven't brought that up before. Okay. Notice from Rightly Insurance. Green County Township Association meeting 914. Ohio Township News, OPER's Webinar Opportunity, OTA's Grassroots Clippings, Green County uh, Soil and Water Conservation District Annual Meeting, uh, email from Fillmore Construction. I did not see that, is that? Cemetery? I missed that. What is this topic? Cemetery. Okay, uh, Kingwood Club Weekly, uh, that'll be old business. I wish I hadn't called it Kingwood Club, but anyway. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Kingwood Huddle. Family Prevention, uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Glenn Cottages Pocket Neighborhood Open House, uh, Department of Health News Release Pfizer Vaccine, Tecumseh Land Trust Online Harvest, Temporary Use Application for Weirig Pavilion, I assume that will be at the BZA in the, uh, will be on the in your report. Uh, remind me, what is TCF? Stand for first and second. Okay, that's a type of that's a YS. See, it's the Yellow Springs Community Foundation. That's the T's right next to the Y on the keyboard. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> uh, that'll come up in next in our next meeting. Uh, 
AOS Honor webinar. Of state. That's Honor of State. I'm sorry, who? That's the Auditor of State. Sorry. Uh, OTA's Legislative Alerts, uh, Green County Improvement Corporation Annual Report, Regional Planning Commission meeting announcement, and our fund status, which will come up in the fiscal officer. Um, we have people here from the public. You have one additional piece of correspondence. Would you want to mention that? Put it on the agenda. Remind me. FTEC um, huh? estimate for the mowing. Okay. And we put that under cemetery. Cemetery. Uh, Are there topics to put on our agenda after we go through our further reports? Well, we were. Bill, I think you said you. Yeah, we were concerned because um, we were notified uh, that there was a building okay. issue or a request for rezoning, I think, for Willow Fields. Mm -hmm. Or it abuts Willow Fields? Abuts. Okay. Okay. So that's what we were, we were like, we didn't know. We just want to get clarified on that. Okay. And we didn't yeah. ask yeah. for the rezoning. <clears throat> Then, then how about if we add that, that as that, a when during my report a new a new item or whatever parallel to the zoning inspector's report? Yeah, that I mean fit? there there is going to be a public hearing tonight on that rezoning it, as, of a piece of property that that is Can we wait on high road. Well, they it? they don't need to say they just wanted to know where the property oh, was okay. being rezoned. It's just being rezoned for residents. Yeah. Okay. I know years ago somebody was trying to put a cell tower there. But and who requested the rezoning? The property owners. Okay. The neighbors? The, the people that live on the property want to put addition on their house. They can't yeah. if it's own business. Okay. No problem. Just... So you're not allowed to tell us if it's the neighbors? Or... That's 520 East High Road. That's public information is neighbors. Probably. Okay. Yeah, so oh, I'm sorry. yeah, I don't know why we're being discreet well, with public <laughs> information, right? Exactly. I mean, that's who lives there. Right. That's exactly. the owners. The, what, what, I, the, right. what I sent you stated all of that. Okay, but I didn't get to see it. Yeah, we didn't. All, see it. We, all we, we just got to see it. All we got was a notice of it. Oh, that's all. Yeah. So we're not trying to be difficult. We're just, we're just curious. Okay. And the entire our entire meeting is going to last about an hour. Oh, well, we're good. So you're welcome to stay. Yeah. It, it's very interesting. <laughs> I'm sure. Look, you guys do a great job. No complaints. Well, thank you. Bye. <laughs> yeah. would, before you change your mind. <laughs> She's not right, though. I need her to get some here. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at the agenda. You might want to stay. It's not going to be too long. <laughs> keep selling. Keep selling. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you, guys. See you guys. Are there other public agenda items? Anything I would say is a whole business. Okay. Uh, we have the fire department report. You <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, since oh, screw that one. Mm -hmm. Well, since the last meeting of the board, not the June twenty first meeting, um, there have been forty eight EMS incidents, six of which were in Beck Township. And 17 fire incidents, three of which were in bad. Um, <coughs> I did a quick snapshot for the last, what was it, three weeks, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, for this run total. On the EMS side of the uh, 48 EMS incidents, uh, 20 required respiratory protection measures uh, for possible COVID infection. So it's a little less than half. Apparatus maintenance issues. Uh, we've had a few. So Medicaid, uh, Medicaid two, the newer of the two, has been out of service for the last two and a half weeks, actually. Let me back up one sec. Yes. Yeah. Um, I want to make sure this is the, the right activity report. Of the Bath Township ones, the, the, well, I guess nine, if you add them, add them up. Am, am I correct? There were only two that were transported. I believe so. Yeah. Two in Bath. Are you talking about? Yeah, of those Bath Townships. Yeah. Yeah, the bat, yeah, for the August report for that. That's, a, that's amazing. Yeah, I was surprised by that. Um, uh, we had a lot of... Um, what is usually our proportion? 
Uh, typically, I don't know, 80 plus percent of people, EMS patients are transported. Um, but uh, we had a lot of medical alarms uh, back then, which kept that number low. You get there and it's possible. Mm -hmm. Almost all the time. Uh, apparatus maintenance issues. Uh, so Medicaid 2 has been out of service for a while. Uh, had an oil leak and transmission problems and had to go for a recall um, for electronic stuff. So we took it to Jermaine Ford for the recall work and just had them do the whole shebang while it was there. Um, so we just got back to the service this evening, actually. So it's happy? There's nothing outstanding? As far as we know. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Engine A2 is out of service currently, the newer of the two, uh, as we can't engage the pump, which is a big problem in fire engine. So, um, the Atlantic Emergency Solutions, formerly Finley Fire Equipment, will be here tomorrow morning to uh, work on that. Um, we also were looking at doing a, entering into a service contract with Atlantic. They do Cedarville's uh, fire apparatus. Chief Miller from please with the work they do. They've done our pump testing, our annual pump testing for five or six years. Um, Who used to do our service, not regular service, but the fire regulation? Um, it was a combo service. of Dave Eamon and these guys. Uh, Dave, Dave Eamon is a little while ago. <laughs> yeah, we've been. Uh, Cedar Hill, Zena Township, and us have all been up a creek without a paddle since they retired um, December 31st for, for the heavy apparatus. Wait, this. December 31st of which year? Last year. Yeah, that's all this. So I thought Dave even disappeared 20 years ago. Something I'm thinking of. Burnell, <laughs> different. Yeah. That's Burnell. Oh, oh, excuse me. Dave was his nephew. Right behind us here. <laughs> um, I'm, Were they related? Really? I, I believe yeah, Dave was really Burnell's right. nephew. Is that right? Or grand nephew or something. I mean, a nephew of sorts. I'm, I'm sorry, I just bumped the Eamon name. I assumed it was the other guy. So <laughs> Finley Fire changed their name. Finley was purchased by Atlantic Emergency Solutions, which is based in Maryland. Um, and has service centers all over the East Coast and now in Ohio, West Virginia, and Kentucky. <laughs> um, so it's the same guy who come out. I mean, he's done pump repairs for us probably for the last two or three years. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they just bought him a new truck, so <laughs> he's all set to go around and work. start uh, doing stuff. So we figure we'll look at the two engines and the two tankers. <coughs> uh, the ambulances, and the rescue, and the brush truck, and the staff vehicles can all be handled by just the local mechanics, typically. And you're going to get quotes from four or five other service providers for this? Uh, we are looking at uh, two others. Seriously? Uh, one company in Hillsboro. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, guys based out of Spring Valley Township, who we used years ago, uh, and then his, uh, he got too busy for small departments. But now he apparently has far more staff and can handle the workload. Is this is is this the guy who works on a barn on 42 and one of the builds on huge. That I, that I don't know. He has a tractor trailer full of parts and. But then I think that's really yeah. It's like six six. <laughs> I had <a> method. <laughs> big fella. Okay, so staff used to refer to him as a big punisher. I'm not sure why, but he's a big fella. Um Did you check with Fisher? I'm sorry? Did you check with Fisher Uh yeah, I think we're gonna use Fisher for the ambulances and the, the smaller things. Um, they can do the one that's only small, but yeah. Yeah, I think we'll have them do that. Uh, Cedarville's using them, Village Ale Springs is using them, so Seems good. It's, the problem is always the big trucks. Uh, Eamon was one of the last small shops that did it did it relatively well. So, uh, but with all the NFPA you know, requirements for certification, we you know, these guys. So, so we shall see. Um, Atlantic's based locally in Connellsville, which is near Nelsonville. Oh, yeah, that's local. Uh, yes. uh, but the service guy is based in um, not St. Paris, but it's the Christiansburg. Closer. Yeah, that's a lot closer. <laughs> that's a heck of a lot closer. Uh, we've also looked at uh, Dayton Fire Department maintenance does contract service, so we're waiting to hear from them. Really? Uh, <coughs> and 
Xenia City is considering putting their maintenance guys into that. Hmm. But that would be a few, I mean, a while still because they have to get certification. Or anything. Hmm. And the city's not even sure if they, still, you know, if they want to go that way or not. Who's Fairborn used, do you know? I have not heard back from Chief Rector yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. It was like, <laughs> they have their own in-house guy. Oh, yeah. um, Tony Drummond, mm -hmm. who uh, also assists the Chief of Kitchen. Does most of everything, and then yeah. a lot of stuff gets, I mean, they'll send out stuff. I think mean, Suffin does some of their work, because mm -hmm. they have Suffin. So. But he has got the, the certification or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, the NFPA 15 years ago required people operate, working on fire apparatus to have emergency vehicle technician certification. Because it is, once you get away from the, the motor part, they're pretty specialized uh, apparatus. Well, I understand that. Well, I was just curious that if, for example, if someone had someone on their staff, would that count then if they send it out to somebody else to do the work even though they weren't certified? Because that person could theoretically oversee the work or choose the person oh, to do the uh, work. NFPA is pretty clear on the person doing the work has to be has, has to be the actual person with the wrenches and the EVT. Okay. Uh, that is funneling down to ambulance work as well, but the NFPA doesn't technically come in unless they're still okay with that. Uh, that's kind of a pain. But we're all kind of facing the same problem. Uh, and then the Chief Mobile was briefly out of service last week uh, when it's uh, when it's going to turn off. It's really <laughs> annoying. But luckily they got stuck on in the low speed intermittent. But Village Automotive took care of that one for us. <laughs> and Dan, I got that door handle on the top there, so I came in, so whatever. And then Dan is still doing some <laughs> Dan stuff for us. <laughs> uh, station update, the locksmith was here last week and fixed, I think, all the doors, hopefully, that weren't closing all the way or locks were too tight or something. The only one is the door into the maintenance area, not maintenance area. Fire department offices. Um, he had to get with Josh from JCAR. JCAR, thank you. Uh, about the door now latches and secures, but it's still rubbing on the floor. So they have to have a pal now. Take it off and clean an eighth of an inch off the bottom. That's, no, that's what I thought. It's not it's a wood door. door. It is a wood door, yeah. 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 I'm probably that simple, but maybe that's not the locksmith's job. Probably not. not so I figured that's the case. Uh, and then we're having a humidity issue in the bunk rooms. Mm. Uh, humidity's been up to 75%, mm. which uh, I looked up is, is out of the range where it should be, 30 to 50%. Mm -hmm. So we were able to bring over the old uh, dehumidifier from Clifton, mm -hmm. put it in there. It's keeping it about 50%. Uh, and then he's been in touch with Jason, uh, trying to figure that one out. Mm -hmm. um, some kind of airflow issue because it's in the bomb trench over there. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Hopefully they'll figure it out. Well, they will figure it out. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> My witness, they're going to figure, figure it out. Figure it out may be different than solve it. Well, let's hope they solve it. No, they will solve it. They will solve it. Um, yeah, I wasn't aware of the problem until one day I walked down the hallway and Nate had put a like, humidity gauge up on mm -hmm. their, their door. It was like 75%. And I asked him, oh, no, no, it's really like humidity all the time. Tell us. Or so now those four-hour steam showers are taken. Uh, they're down to two-hour now. So okay. <laughs> that ought to be better. Well, see, 75% humidity feels really good at the weather we've been having. You know. Yeah. 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 There's the thought. Danny remembers is something about the circuit. The, have the air circulating back there, but we'll see. They have to figure it out. Don't we? <clears throat> um, so next was just an FYI. Um, we're having some issues regionally, but also here as well, um, with patient restraint issues. Um, our paramedics are authorized to administer a drug called ketamine. Mm -hmm. uh, ketamine has multiple uses for us, uh, one of which is chemical restraint of combative patients. Um, nationally, you may have heard there's just a situation, well, a continuance of a situation from Aurora, Colorado, um, where guy was arrested by the police, and that's a whole other issue, but he died in police custody. Um, he was administered ketamine by paramedics under the order from the police officers. Uh, the police officers have now been charged with manslaughter as have oh, no. two paramedics. Um, ketamine's a very potent sedative, uh, does its job very well, but there's a lot of controversy both in terms of law enforcement, as they 
they see it as something that's, oh, well, it's another tool for us, um, whereas we see it as something that is a medically necessary procedure only in certain cases. Um, unfortunately, our guidance regionally is very sparse on the administration of ketamine in combative patient situations. Um, I found out today that both the Regional Physicians Advisory Board and our Standing Orders Committee regionally are both looking into this issue to enhance it. In the meantime, Ben and I are releasing some interim guidance for our staff on what to do. Because um, we are, you know, for a small town, we have a surprising amount of combative patients um, that law enforcement interfaces with. And, uh, some of our paramedics are more, you know, like, okay, no, hold still, and give them a shot. Others are a little bit less likely to do that. Um, so it's a, it's a big, it's a kind of, it's a conundrum, if you will. But um, so we're working, working through it to find the best method that helps the patient, helps our guys, and uh, helps law enforcement. Is the, is the essential problem who decides when it, when it's appropriate? The that is a problem in some agencies. We have made it very clear to our staff that. Police, sheriff, whoever can say, I think he needs to be restrained. But under under our training, that is our response. That's our call. That's a paramedic's call. You have to assess the patient. They have to meet certain criteria, um, and they have to meet certain medical criteria before they're sedated. And something I think law enforcement tends not to. We don't see it much with the Yellow Springs police because they're they tend to be better trained and educated, I guess. But is you know, on TV, you give someone a shot. You know, if you think back to Dr. McCoy on Star Trek, everyone he gave that shot to, they were out in no time. And it doesn't work that way in the real world. <laughs> you know, uh, people think that's, we're just going to give someone a shot and they're out. But it's not. And if it's a 400-pound pissed off guy, um, it's going to take a little bit for that kidney to do anything. So, And it's, I mean, it's an issue that we, you know, we also need to work through with, with law enforcement, both the sheriff's office and, and the Elsewhere's police. So just wanted to give you a heads up. I'm glad you're bringing it up. It's a complicated issue. Oh, yes. So, but if they asked for it, it would always be, like the thing that happened in Colorado, it would always be their responsibility if something went awry. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's our paramedics' responsibility because they're the ones administering the medication. But you said in Colorado, the police asked for it. The med and the paramedics then did it. And then the police were... And then uh, the young man charged. passed away, and, and the ketamine was listed as one of the contributing factors. And the police were charged, but not the paramedics. The paramedics were charged as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. They're, yeah, they were both charged. So. <coughs> um, and then, just a reminder, a friendly reminder: I'll be out of the office on vacation from Sunday through September twenty-second. And what's left of Denny will be in charge during that time. <laughs> Is he back yet? Uh, partially. Yeah, he just went. He was here this morning and then went out this afternoon for an appointment and now it's an MRI schedule so they'll figure something out. Um, and then I gave you an additional memo, hopefully you all ended up with it. <laughs> Mark, right? Okay. Yeah, Mark Mark needs one. And this is more, I, I, mean, I guess more of a general FYI. Um, so we're, you know, we're currently short two regular staff positions, one part-time and one career. Um, our firefighter EMT on B shift who worked 24-hour shift every six days. Uh, that was Casey Brewer, but he left to go to uh, Inglewood, where they offered him five bucks more an hour to start. And then, of course, our lieutenant paramedic full-time position on B shift, which was Alex Wendt, who left to go to Beaver Creek, who offered him 50% more uh, than we were paying him. What did Casey get? Uh, Casey, they gave him five bucks more an hour, so seventeen something an hour total. Yeah. Seventeen something. Okay. And what did um, Alex get? Hundred fifty percent more. He was seventeen. He was seventeen something, so probably twenty five, twenty six dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. um, now they're both bigger, significantly bigger departments than we are. Uh, so, so you list here. Uh, position, start rate, regional rate. Start rate is what we're paying. Yes, currently. If you started, as you started. Yes. Before any pay increase. And the regional rate. So one of the, the other things that we've looked at too is, is looking at adding some uh, 
to one to two part-time firefighter, paramedic, or just paramedics um, to help with coverage on Wednesdays when our career guys are off. They're always off on Wednesday for their, their Kelly day. Um, and for when one of these guys is on sick. Uh, with Alex gone, um, I've been picking up a lot of the, the overnight coverage for paramedics. Danny hasn't really been able to do a whole lot since he can't move his arm. Um, which, I mean, it's fine. I don't get paid more, but I get more over time. I don't know. Comp time. So <laughs> that helps me at the end of the year. Um, but having these fill in guys would help fill in these gaps when, when someone's off on sick time or vacation time or whatever. Um, so looking at that, as Don pointed out, the, the chart, we've got our start rates and then regional rates. When I looked at regional rates, I didn't include departments like very large departments like Kettering and Beaver Creek because we're never going to be able to match. I mean, I think so. Uh, match what, what they pay. But uh, we looked at Sugar Creek, Manor Township, Springfield Township, <coughs> guys who are more in line with what our annual run volumes are. So we would start we're a new farm. More in line with our what? Annual run volume. Run volume, okay. How hard you're working. <laughs> so currently a firefighter EMT part time would start at approximately twelve twenty four an hour. Uh, the regional rate's approximately fifteen dollars an hour to start. Um, Firefighter paramedic part time or just a paramedic run well, at that time. Uh, we start at fifteen twenty four an hour, and the regional rate is seventeen fifty an hour. And then our lieutenant paramedic, uh, we're, we start at approximately seventeen fifty five an hour, depending on qualifications. Uh, the regional rate is actually closer to twenty one fifty an hour. Um, while the firefighter and teeth are bread and butter here, and they keep us keep us going. Uh, Right now, our biggest pressing need is for ambulance coverage, advanced life support, paramedic coverage. I'm sorry, for which coverage? Advanced life support coverage, paramedic coverage. Um, is to get the full-time position filled and then this, uh, add, add these part-time guys. Um, just as an additional comparison, the village is hiring in a part-time dispatcher uh, with an hourly rate starting at 20 46 an hour, um, which doesn't come with any commensurate sort of training, they do it on the job, whereas our guys had that training. And a part-time police officer with a starting rate of 2359. So we've got a recommendation there. And of course, I, I want you know everyone to know that we certainly recognize we, me and our other staff that Miami Township has a very generous benefit package, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. but, that, but that affects our full-time guys, not our part-time guys. But um, you know that's something that Denny and I constantly remind people, because especially younger staff don't always recognize the value of medical insurance until <laughs> until they fall down the stairs off work or something like that, and then because they always have that idea that workers' comp is going to cover them because they're a worker everywhere. Yeah, I'm like it doesn't work that way. Trust me. <laughs> Wish it did, but um, so what we look at, what we recommend is you know if if we could do it, of course, it all depends on budget. Uh, starting a part-time paramedic only. We haven't hired paramedic only people in eons. We've always looked to do just firefighter paramedics. So you have both, um, but there are a lot of people who are sole, just single certified as a paramedic out there who would be willing to cover shifts. Um, start them if we were to get them at seventeen fifty an hour. Uh, firefighter paramedic, eighteen fifty an hour, and then lieutenant paramedic position, anywhere from twenty fifty to twenty two fifty an hour, depending on qualifications. And I put the DOQ in there because well, we, we have a system where if they're a fire inspector, at times the higher, they get a little bit more money, and if they're an instructor, they get more money as well. Because yeah. um, those are all things we need and want as well. Um, now, of course, the bummer side of this is that in the perfect world when we do this, then you know, Lieutenant Pauletti, who's the other lieutenant, would have to have his salary bumped up, otherwise he's gonna get pretty <laughs> upset that the new guy makes more than he does. Um, and then you probably want to maintain the buffer between the two lieutenants and the captain. Uh, so you have to look at that. Cool. Um, and part of our problem has been, you know, I think one of the things that people appreciate about the township in general, all of us, is that we kind of fly under the radar a lot for a lot of people. And we're not that expensive in the grand scheme of things. And we've always, at least during my time here and working with Chris, and Mark on their longer tenures on the board, we've always tried to keep the costs down because we're all cognizant that Miami Township and Yellow Springs particularly are expensive places to live. Um, but our levy hasn't kept pace with our staffing. You know, I think 
when I started and when Chris started on the board in what, 97, 96, 96? Um, we still had a very robust volunteer program. Oh, yeah, and it was. Yeah. We, we were turning them away. Oh, yeah, we were convinced that that, you know, well, all right, just gonna last forever. And then, uh, remember all those pictures on the wall? Yep. Oh, then reality caught up with us, uh, which is the same problem that other every other community is having. And we had to change our staffing model to keep providing the services. But eventually, that takes more and more and more out of both billing and <coughs> and levy. So, if we it'd be great if I could blame it on someone. But if we applied <laughs> your proposed start rates. Uh, I guess I'd like to see a projection of what the next year, two, three years will cost us. Yep, and that, that's my plan. This was just so, the to see if you guys. So have to the current room. employees would get a raise. Only a couple. And only a couple. Yeah. And new hypothetical and. Uh, employees uh, at a new rate and what we'd be looking at. And it can't really be hypothetical. It has to be new employees. Right. <laughs> this week, yeah. just doing a projection, call it hypothetical. You got it. Um, <laughs> Can I throw my two cents in here? Yeah, whatever would be helpful. Okay. Um, I don't think we need a, a, a projection or a budget or a three year out. What we need is somebody who's sleeping in the bunk room who will respond to a, to an emergency and not have to have Colin come down and do it. So there is an emergency in house as opposed to also in outhouse. We, uh, outhouse. <laughs> we, <laughs> we need to get butts in the seat, as to, they say. So and the only way to get butts in the seat is to pay them, and we will find the money. If that means we won't buy anything, is this for the next year until we get another levy? That's the way it is. But do we, we need to act on these numbers yes, we tonight? Do. Yes, we do. In my opinion, we do. In my opinion, we need to add money to those numbers. I mean, those numbers are comparable, and comparable is fine. But I'd like to have them a little better to get people in here. We have money. We got money all over the place. It's how we're spending it. Where Wait do we want to spend? We have money all over. The place. We do. We do. literally we have money in, in many most, different areas. Okay. We are not short on staff because we are short on money. We're short on staff because we're not paying potential staff enough for them to be here, and, and we're burning the, out the staff that we have, making them work. Extra hours, extra hard. Yeah, I mean, hiring in these positions would also help us reduce the overtime rate that, or the amount of overtime that we're paying out right now. Now, granted, it's mainly our EMTs who are doing it, but it's contributing to burnout. Because mm -hmm. I think anyone who's ever worked an hourly job knows it's fun at first, but then, <laughs> um, and so well, that that would definitely help reduce. Well, yeah, definitely help reduce. Mm -hmm. it. Your your report doesn't say here. I want us, you know, here's a proposed resolution, blah, blah, blah. But Chris, I'm hearing you say, let's act tonight and authorize. Yep, that's what I'm saying. And I'm not comfortable uh, seeing numbers and then immediately voting on them. I would, I'd like to. A huge step. So you're all right with having for the next two weeks or so have Colin get out of bed at two o'clock in the morning and come down here. If we vote on this tonight, are we suddenly going to have one more EMT? No, but we're going to put it out to bid or out to whatever it is tomorrow morning <laughs> to find somebody to come in here. You've got family in this business. You've been around. What do you think? Well, I was figuring that you would get around to asking me, and I've been thinking about it, and I've been thinking that uh, that I would 
have to side with Chris. And that uh, I feel that uh, that the sooner we we act on it, the uh, the sooner we show some results. <coughs> Question. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> I see it's a couple bucks over the regional in each category, 250. And you said here they get a very a great benefit package. Our full time. At, at, at the, oh, but not. Which ones are full time? So the one position we're hiring that is, is a full time position is our lieutenant paramedic yeah. supervisor. So in addition to the salary, they also have the full benefit. Package, so. But not the, not the first ticket. But not the first ticket. Okay. Just wondered what the difference was. And they, they probably wouldn't have it at anywhere else, anywhere else either. They may or may not. It depends. I mean, unfortunately, in this part of the state, it's very common to have part-time staffing. Mm -hmm. So you have guys who work multiple departments. Mm -hmm. And they may get benefits somewhere. Or more often than not, they don't. Unfortunately, they're young, and they think that they're going to be OK. Mm -hmm. you know, which that's a bigger issue, but I wish I could solve it. <laughs> well, I get to work on that. <laughs> well, for instance, one of the guys working today, he works two other jobs, yeah. two other fire department jobs. Now, he does get some benefits from us, but um, yeah, he also works at Springfield Township and Harrison Township. So. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Yes, How long have the starting rates been these particular rates for Miami Township? Um, a while. I mean, they do get bumped up because we always give when the trustees um, decide to do it, we, everyone gets the cost of living increases. So and those rates do come up. And, that yeah, changes it's it's and, and it changes, yes. changes yes. base rates. And then we usually hire people in at that new rate just because it seems fairer. And that but, happens every year? But merit pay. Years. I mean, cost of living, yeah, everybody gets cost of living. It's not very much. But merit pay has been a while since we adjusted. We adjusted yeah. top yeah. level personnel's salary three or four years ago, perhaps. Yeah. I can't remember when we did. We had two of the part-timers last year got merit increases. Is that right? They had evaluations and their supervisors, mm -hmm. both uh, Georgia and Cassidy. Okay. So they're, not everyone's making that rate, obviously, that's a start, so we have People, basic EMTs in the range of, of that to 13 something. Which would be 10 and Nick and Cassidy. Um, and we only have one part-time paramedic at this point, and he's making the 15, 24. Mm -hmm. uh, our other paramedics are the career guys. Mm -hmm. Two, we use that too. And then myself and the assistant chief. Yeah. Uh, I sympathize with you. I like to you know, have all the information and think about it a little bit. but. Colin reported here that he had lost those two employees. Oh, like that. <laughs> two months ago. Mm -hmm. All right, and, and they had, you know, and he hasn't been waiting, you know, to try to get someone. So, you know, something does need to be done to to enable this department to be restaffed. It's and, and full disclosure. I mm -hmm. want to make sure you understand. This is not Colin's idea. Mm -hmm. This is my idea. I went to him with the idea of how much more money is it going to take to get somebody in here? Well, or somebody's. And one of the things that we're experiencing, we being the fire service, is now, is the same thing as McDonald's and everywhere else. That's, you know, people don't want to do the work. I mean, I don't know where they've all gone, but uh, so departments are now cannibalizing each other, and the big ones, Beaver Creek is one, Kettering. Miami Township and Claremont County, they have the ability to offer 50% mm -hmm. yeah. additional plus, you know, Lieutenant went 50% additional plus he got to keep his seniority and his benefits transferred. Mm -hmm. That's unheard of, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> a full lateral like that. Uh, obviously, we McDonald's can, can recruit 14 year olds. Right. You know, we got a little hard time with that one. <laughs> I'll talk to the well, governor, see if we can get 14 year olds certified as EMTs. But yeah, that's the other part of it. Our guys all have to come in already. Yeah. with hundreds of hours of training underneath their belt. Uh, well, uh, I hear 
two of my colleagues saying do it now. Um, the way this is written, I don't know what it is. That is, if we did a resolution tonight, what would we say our new... These numbers plus, personally, I would add $2 an hour to each of, each of those. Those are, the, those are the, 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 the people that we're seeking. Those are the employees that we're seeking. And, and, and okay. currently employed folks in the same categories would similarly be... Yes, they would. Yep. Then what's the wording? I mean, I don't want to be... Okay. Well, that, that's sort of... Uh, I'm going to move that we... I, I, okay, I'm going to move that we put out um, uh, applications, uh, requests for applications for employment uh, for paramedics, firefighter -fire paramedics, part-time, both of those, lieutenant paramedic career at uh, 1950, 2150, and 2250 to 2450 per hour. Um, uh, Better say those again. <laughs> well, it's written right there. You just uh, added two to one of them, and you added three to the next. Oh. Okay, 20. <laughs> it's like Oprah here. He's just giving. 1950, 2050, 2250, and 2450, respectfully. Three, something like that. Wait a minute. I got the 1950, the 2050, and then you said 2250 at the bottom, 2450 at the top. D O Q. I don't know what bottom and top means. It I see it, but I don't understand. Well, the DOQ depends on qualifications if they come. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Without much qualification. Uh, <laughs> and then, oh, it's going to be Yeah, it helps pull people in. Because they look at that. Yeah, that's what they look at. That's why we're saying it to you. It's absurd. And additionally, readjusting the compensation of equally qualified current members of the organization to two we're talking about. It's not like a, a massive uh, mm -hmm. jump um, for the additional two dollars for what they are making now. now. I see Margaret writing this down. Uh -huh. She got it. Yeah, I have. I got it. Are you going to read it back to me? No. <laughs> I can't because Colin hasn't told me exactly what to say. Uh, we'll get it. So, so I have moved for that. I have asked for that Essentially, an end endorsing the suggestion in this memo with $2 increase at each line item. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Any, any other comment? My comment is I support the intent and I, I, I concur we have the money in one fund or another, although maybe not the fund, we may have to shift money. Uh, do you hear? Uh -huh. Okay, just check it. This, this is not that I want, to, I want us to look ahead a couple of years. This is not the way of, I think we should normally, uh, I mean, this is a big step, and, and it's a step. Maybe we should have previewed that we knew it was coming or whatever. Um, well, let me tell you, a year from today, we're gonna to take some big steps. Because we're gonna be deciding how we want the levy in the spring to read. Uh, because that's the first time we can I know. organize 23. So, so uh, uh, just that this is a, we, we, could ha we could do this differently, but this, this is good, this is fine. This is an emergency. Okay. Uh, yes, we've lost two good people because of, I mean, $5 an hour increase. Mm -hmm. Can understand people would leave or would move on. Uh, so there is a motion 
to increase to adopt with a $2 increase in each of these items, the paragraph in the chief's memo. And it's been seconded. Any other discussion? Aye. Will we call the roll? Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Thank you. Thank you guys. I'll get those out tomorrow morning. I do want to add too, just I don't want people to think that you know these guys and other ones who left us for more money. One of the nice things, at least for us, is that people actually enjoy working here. So it, it is a tough decision for all of them. I don't think anyone's like skipped out of here, you mm -hmm. know, without shedding a tear or two. But, mm -hmm. but this one, I think, definitely helped us be more competitive. Mm -hmm. At least retain. And, and retain, <laughs> definitely retain some people. Um, I mean, luckily, our part-time paramedic currently is, he also works full-time for the city of Springfield. So I don't see him going anywhere because this is more than he likes to be here. Which is great, <laughs> yeah. um, but it'll help us definitely okay. keep Jason <coughs> and Nate and whoever the new Alex is. Because, mm -hmm. right. And no someone came <laughs> to the door today asking about being a volunteer. I gave them the information. Yes, yeah, she had called She's and said, I'll, "She said I'll be there shortly," and then three hours later, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we got her. I got the info, so. Yep. And we do have two other volunteers in the pipe right now who are both already empties, so that'll help out. Yep. A little bit, so that's, every little bit helps. Yep. Uh, Marilyn, I hate to put you on the spot, but could you give us your short since your potential uh, replacement for well, I guess not me, but, uh, <laughs> replacement for somebody on the board? Um, what is your opinion of that action? This action. Wow. Let's <laughs> put you on the spot. Yeah, get on your feet. Go. <laughs> And the short version, too, remember? <laughs> Do you want me to cut off the camera? <laughs> what is my shirt? My shirt opinion. Well, I'm coming from the perspective of not being able to get a handle on all these funds and what's going on. I just, I looked at them and they just, things coming and going, it doesn't give me an overall. So from that perspective, I don't know how, how, how okay, but keep, keep in but, mind, I, I said, but I, just heard a question. I know, I'm keeping in mind, I said this was an emergency and I said we had enough money yeah. to, to cover this. So do you think this is a wise decision or not? I think it's a wise decision mm -hmm. and I always, I mean, Myers was hiring for $18 an hour and it's, I like to see low wage earners with big important jobs get paid. You yeah. know, it's, it's pitiful. 1224 an hour for somebody putting it up in the line. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other comments from the, the crowd? <laughs> no. <laughs> Very mind. Here we are. Oh, yeah. I have a anything, questions for Colin. Oh. Anything else on you? From fire? Uh -huh. Yes? Um, where are we? Did we start this, the tar target solutions yet? Uh, yes. And yeah. Okay. Well, well there's, a, there's a side of it we have to build ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and Danny is working on that. Because Could you repeat exactly. the question? Have we, yeah, we've contracted with a company called Target Solutions, but they just changed their name. Vendor or something or other. Uh, it's an online training platform that will allow our guys and gals to get uh, their continuing education. Um, and part of that is also internal department training we can add to it ourselves. And um, Denny is working on building that side of the platform for us. Uh, it's not a lot. I mean, it's not like it's a like crazy amount of stuff he has to do, but it's uploading and downloading things and computer stuff. <laughs> Which is why I am not doing that, because this is potentially, as I understand it, what takes the place, at least temporarily, of our Tuesday night training uh, <laughs> yeah. parties. Yeah, this will allow the, everyone to stay up to date on new developments, both nationally and here. And it's video, and it's actually good quality video stuff, too. Because some of the programs we've had guys try before are 
Death by PowerPoint videos. Where someone's just reading a slide. Yeah. <laughs> and these are a lot more, um, I mean, there's online things that you can actually interact with, and it's a, it's a good thing. Guys can attend programs that the like Los Angeles Fire Department's doing, if there's stuff that's applicable to what we do. So it's, uh, <coughs> but how do they get the hands-on, like crawling through the big toy and those sorts of things? Oh, we'll still, I mean, we'll, they're still gonna have to do that, and that'll be on each, each shift. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be some trainings that we will try and get everyone to come together as a department. The downside to our model now is, as I said, since so many of these guys who work for us also work for other departments, it's kind of hard to be like, all right, be here on Tuesday night, and they're like, well, i got to be in Harrison Township on Tuesday night. Uh, but we can also record things and then put it on this plat plat platform. Now, hands-on, it's not going to help, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, but um, getting Alex's position replaced will help, because right now there's really no one to do it on that train, on that shift. Mm -hmm. uh, but Nate and Jason are still doing the training, mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> um, lastly, it actually does say deduct meter. Has the village started or have they caught up with our deduct meter usage or non usage or I, that rebate? I, that I don't know because I don't see that bill. Or something. We didn't but get a bill. There is a deduct meter, I know. Okay, and it's and working like a chain. And it says deduct. Yeah, it does, right there. Yeah. <laughs> and there's also I'm like impressed. seven months of deduct meter that didn't get deducted. Aha! It needs to be deducted. I will I'm gonna do that. I will speak we'll with the fiscal deduct. officer and give a Johnny. We'll get the fiscal officer to give us what the deduct meter, or what well, not the fiscal officer, we'll get the village to give us the number that they reimbursed us for for the same time period last year. And deduct it this year. So we have the same equipment, we have the same yeah. people, we just move the space. It would be the same amount of water used, would it not? Mm -hmm. We're not watering the grass. Well, yeah, but I don't think in the old station they were, we didn't have a deduct meter because the way they built it in the old days prior to building codes. <laughs> um, I, I think what Jack Liebold always said is the only thing that was metered was the water to the toilets, the sinks. But the fills overhead for the trucks and the hoses oh, I see. were, not, were not on the meter. So that's how it was deducted. And that's how I thought it was going to be built here, just because that's how it always was. But it turns out that's not code. <laughs> that's pesky codes. Um, but I can double check that. But that was always the understanding I had. So the, Jack. The, the, the situation is we are being billed for every drop water that is being used to protect the community. Correct and that we were not being billed for that before. Right. Somewhere in the Ohio so Revised think Code. it should not be right. yeah. in our bill. Yeah, we can't be billed under the ORC somewhere in there, because everything's in the ORC. Um, there's a law that states that fire departments cannot be billed for either the water that's used to fill the trucks in the station and for hydrants. So like you can't put a meter on a hydrant <laughs> during a fire, which some places do, but uh, not in Ohio. <laughs> um, and the old station, it wasn't an issue, but here, so something happened. The deduct happened. meter was installed, but it wasn't working. <coughs> so, that's correct. Okay. And, and is it working now? Yes. And then there's the last six months that we should be credited for. Yeah. Credited. They had to figure out what the appropriate credit is somehow. In theory, that shouldn't be too tough if they have an average of what the deduct. Yeah. Shows mm -hmm. that yeah. you do math. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think it's so difficult. But yeah, that you couldn't do it that way. And worst thing that could happen would be is that well, let's go a couple more months Once and see the what the pattern is, yeah. and then we'll apply that backwards. I don't really care what the solution yeah. is, as long as at some point. <laughs> no, I'm just giving an idea. As a solution, if there's a solution, we get a check for the solution. Yeah. I will. Um, yeah. I'll follow us up with the fiscal officer, and we'll get the bill. Very good. Between the two of us, one of us. Yeah. We'll do it. Um, my rough calculations, which I seem to be continuing to rough calculate, is we're at about <clears throat> $42,000 on reimbursable expenses for the period from March 21st, whatever that period started. Uh, reimbursable for COVID runs, uh, qualified runs, about $42,000 plus uh, to this, like I said, to this point. So I guess we'll just keep that in mind as we go along. Um, 
Okay, I'm done. Okay, well, art will come up in the old business. Okay. Uh, any, so, no other fire department? I got nothing. Cemetery? <laughs> Since our last meeting, we have had six burials, two foot and four foot of four. Can you speak up a little bit? There are, since our last meeting, we've had six burials, two foot and four foot of four. August is always the busiest month. Really? Yeah. I would have expected Jan December, February, and August to compete with each other. I have one tomorrow and put through the ashes and then the mouth. Mm -hmm. And one on the 25th up here. But I should want to find it in the forest. I'll take care of that when I get back. So, uh, your building will be completely gone tomorrow evening. Okay. All the building, everything else will be gone. Mm -hmm. So this is the st storage shed, whatever, at at uh, Glen Forest. He's coming tomorrow evening on it after work and all the way and the guys can do their thing. Well, foundation's got to come out. It's gone. It is? Yeah. Seriously, you got that out already? Yeah, Mom. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes. Good job. And then I'll be a tree. I'll be trimming for all that. Building is this load. Was it a rebar in there? Yeah, it was a uh, wire uh, mesh. Yeah. Work up for you. It's all gone. Mm -hmm. okay. Except for the but he's taking this one out. Good. And the door. We need a door. We have an extra door to get in. Entry door. Uh, Stop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is kind of off on the side, but thank you very much for the impromptu consulting about uh, the digging for a. Um, the burial I was doing in Selma. How'd that go? This is not township business, but uh, a, a chairman's prerogative. I was at a, a church cemetery project, and we were digging to burial, bury for uh, <laughs> cremains, and we came upon an object underneath. What did you say you thought? It, it was, was a vault. Yes, the vault that, that we were at. We had a vault that was, instead of it being a <clears throat> foot stone, it was a headstone. And he made immediate suggestions and solved the problem. Move the stone. Anyway. Oh, uh, that's all I had other than the, we had a testament for a moment. We probably don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about it now? I think under cemetery, this would be the place. Uh, I don't think I'm the one who should talk about it. <laughs> How much is the estimate? We got an estimate for oh, you just got mowing and maintaining the cemetery, mowing and maintaining the cemetery. And the, pre the current mower is willing to continue at his old price? Mm -hmm. He's willing to continue, but I think he's going to bump his price up a little bit. Well, let's just pretend he does. Let's call it 18000 Okay. Right? So we've got one estimate for 18000 We have one estimate for $24,000 change. Dollars. 500 Yeah. Mm -hmm. For exactly the same service, as mm -hmm. far as I can tell. And the, and the, the new estimate for being is the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, never been in the business. Right. I'll take this one. <laughs> <laughs> you have a question? No, I'm got, I, I said I'll, I'll have a firm opinion on this one. <laughs> Created a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any more possible estimates? Or? No, we haven't. I mean, we haven't. Well, we haven't really advertised it. Right. But mm -hmm. this is just out of the clear blue sky. Out of I mean, you guys told me you needed a new mower, and uh, I heard somebody was going into the business, so I made a referral. Okay, well, keep them coming. 
Well, we'll get some more. Mm -hmm. so round somebody else up to But I'm, I'm going to move that we do not consider Roof Arms bid. He's fine. I think he's okay. I don't think we need to even move since we haven't <laughs> formally put it out for bid. Okay. Yeah, just talk I about believe I, I move that we ignore it. <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> Nor current bid. <clears throat> Unsolicited. Or we did solicit. I don't think. We, I don't think we need a motion. Okay. But okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, what would be the proper process for publicly? I mean, there are a lot of people who mow. I, I, I would like the uh, cemetery sexton to write up a job description and we can publicize it. Okay. Price proposals. Anything else on cemetery? <coughs> uh, no. Road report. Um, after my burial in the morning, I'm going to trim Tobias Harbison Road, and hopefully I can get most of them done before Monday. So I'll probably do some Saturday if I don't finish it. So you're going on I'm going vacation. vacation for one week? Uh, from the 14th to the 25th. Two weeks. I'll turn everything in on uh, the 13th of Monday. I'm going to pay for it and everything in Probably split it. Come back on the 25th for the ashes. Come back to work Monday for the rest of the year. <clears throat> Anything else on the cemetery? No. Road report. That was one of the Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd like to get the bodies done because uh, hopefully they'll come in and pay that room pretty soon. They're in the area. So that's that. still what the county engineer is. So you've got about a quarter left of sniff to trim if you haven't already, right? Oh, no, yeah. Okay. You trimmed it since yesterday, the day before? Sniff room? Yeah. Oh, about two weeks ago. Well, there's about a quarter of it that still needs to be done off of Fairfield Pipe. It's all hanging over the street. Or it's new. Yeah. Take a look. I will. There's the little thing in Golden Willow that we talked about oh, a million times. Yeah. East High Road. Oh, yeah. I think I'll do it more. Okay. Cornell Circle. Not yet. Uh, uh, Larkins could use to be mowed part of it and about a quarter of it trimmed. It's been trimmed. Recently. Yeah, two weeks ago. The day before that. Not the day before yesterday? Larkins wrote it then. Is there something hanging out somewhere? It says part of it needs to be mowed and... Well, it probably could use mowed. Well, I mean like grass sticking up like... Oh, well, yeah, I'm talking about trimming the food or I'm talking about push on. Tobias needs a little trimming? Yes. Harvison needs a little trimming? Yes. South River needs a little trimming? Kyle, North River. Kyle needs a little trimming. North River needs a little trimming. Tanyard. Uh, <coughs> Clifton Cemetery, yeah, Tanyard wrote. Now, Clifton Cemetery, how come A section didn't get, we needed much? Well, we ran out of time. Oh. Right. Yeah, we had to do something else. Okay, I take note. All right, uh, swimming pool? Yes. Yes, you did. Or yes. Yeah, Brian Park. That's a long list, man. <laughs> you slow down the barrier. <laughs> Plus, this year everything keeps growing. Yeah, you know, not, not that it slow down. Not this year. to excuse anything, but it it's like double speed of growing. Everybody is. We're not on it. <clears throat> um, any inquiries about the new truck? 
Yeah. Have you started? Yeah. We couldn't get in trouble. In time soon, we will be in trouble. You have to start somewhere. Well, I will. Uh, I noticed the other day in the in speaking of trucks uh, that it says it wants its oil changed. I'm going to suggest, and uh, Mark and Don, you can disagree if you'd like, but I'd like to change the policy of Miami Township to change to all synthetic oil from now on. Uh, dinosaur oil needs to go away. Why? Uh, because it uh, is, is easier on equipment that's working hard. Uh, it's longer between oil changes. That is the synthetic oil. Yeah, is correct. Easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there is really no downside to synthetic versus dinosaur oil. Except for cost. Except for cost, but you know, you're, you get that back because you're not changing oil every 3,000 miles like we do on everything now. And the truck tells us when it's changing oil. I know, I know. It just well, does this include the track? Everything. Everything. Uh, yeah, I, I've checked with John Deere. John Deere says you can use synthetic oil in, in all their equipment, no problem. Ford says you can use it in all their equipment, no problem. Okay. No, I'm not sure about the hot rod, but you yeah. have to see what goes in here. So, Mark Don? Um, this, this could be a motion, but often people do this kind of decision just you know, on the road. What the guy just says, I'm going to buy switch. this kind of tire instead of that kind of tire. Or... You tired of using dinosaur oil? No. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to switch, we'll switch over. Okay. I'd like to see that happen, yes. Okay. Especially if we're going to get a new truck, I think it will help. Mm -hmm. Long term, yeah. I, I don't think we need to vote on this. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. Have no. okay. Mark, you all right with that? Yeah. Okay. That's it on my end, Mr. Chair. Uh, do we still have a fiscal officer? Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, right there. He's got a little resolution. <laughs> what? Just a little resolution. Just a little resolution. I bet you I can almost say what the first three lines. I bet. <laughs> I should be able to say with my eyes closed. Resolution 2021-31, Amendment of Permanent Appropriations. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. The general front ahead <coughs> increase the Bureau of Workers Comp um, payment by 400, I mean, the line item by $400 and increased electricity by 400. Cemetery fund, I increased contractor services by 14,000. Partially that's due to the fact that we're buying a, a barn. Um, and a special levy fire, I increased um, payment of our volunteers basically by 3,500 to take us through the end of the year. Yeah, yeah Maui Touch Trustees authorized the fiscal officer to do so yesterday. So moved. Okay. Yes. So there's a resolution that has been Moved. Do I hear a second? Yeah. I do hear a second. <clears throat> Any discussion? <clears throat> I have none. No. Can we call the roll? Mr. Crockett? Yeah. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. Um, just want to make sure you all notice that we did receive nearly $65,000 from the American Rescue Plan. And it's in a new account, 2273. Mm -hmm. And we're, of course, it's already calculating how we're going to spend it. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There's going to be he's a working. discussion about this. Right, I know, but I mean, you know, he was just talking about um, the uh, amount of COVID, you know, runs kind of thing. Um, I don't think I really have much else to say. But I'm happy to answer. Any questions that anybody has? If there's anything else I need to do for you. Oh. Speak now or forever hold your peace. In in this meeting, maybe not. Okay. All right. Well. Anything else for the fiscal officer? <clears throat> Seeing none. Thank you. 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 Thank you
zoning inspector. Okay. Do you want me to sort of do the public hearing, or are you going to do the public hearing? I mean, we, we have a public hearing on the agenda tonight. We do. I actually was not aware of that. Yeah. I went over and over this with you guys, sent you the announcement, Scheduled it. Is it in the paper? It's in the newspaper. I it's assume that there was going to be this eight. big crowd talking about something. No. Well, this is this is almost a formality. Spare me my ignorance. All right. This is I wrote a piece. Okay. Let, let me. Just well, we'll we'll start from the beginning, and I'll I'll <clears throat> lead you through this. I had a request from the owner to the property at 520 East High Road to rezone their property from business to a R1B. The reason for the rezoning is that they came to me asking to put it, to get a permit for an addition on their home. They can't put an addition on their home because their property is owned business. Their, grand, their house is grandfathered in, but they can't expand it. So it doesn't allow an inappropriate use. Why the property is owned business is not clear. Um, Could you repeat the address? This is where Don Lewis used to live. Yes. It's the property between the property on the corner of East Union and Hyde Road and the property on the corner of, e of Hyde Road and US 68. There are only three pieces of property in that little <laughs> section, in that block. Okay? It's, a, it's a narrow, 100 foot wide, deep lot, okay? It, on the north edge, it abuts the Willow Fields common area. And that's why our two guests were here, because the, the Homeowners Association was notified that one of the adjoining properties, that's part of the, the process of doing this. The, the, um, to do a rezoning requires um, recommendation from regional plan which we received and they say yes we think it's a good idea it requires a public hearing and a recommendation from the board from the zoning commission and the zoning commission has had their public hearing and they make the recommendation to the trustees that the, that the zoning change be made it's now your responsibility to conduct a public hearing which means all you have to do is say Public hearing is open. Okay. Does anyone have anything they'd like to say? Public hearing is open. Does anyone have anything they'd like to say? I can actually say something on that because I was uh, I attended the regional planning meeting where they discussed this, mm -hmm. and I think it's actually a smart decision to change it because it better protects the homeowners who live there. Uh, it makes the zoning applicable to what they're using no. the property for, and no. it better protects the residents right around it. Oh, it's, you know, it's, it was a spot zone. It was a business zone with no other business around it. As I say, I don't know how that ever happened in the first place, but it's, it's, it's actually a, a sort of a blemish on the map. And as you say, it's, it's only appropriate that it's... It if it was Lewis... But anyway, you need to close the public... Yeah. Well, you've, you've had your... Ask if there's any more. Close the public hearing, and then I can talk some more if you'd like. <coughs> Any other comments? Uh, it would have been nice if we had a written recommendation from the Zoning Commission. Okay. This, we have had a problem with that. Yeah, I know, for like the last no, no, 25 the, years. The problem this time around is I have the draft minutes that say that. Okay? And I can... And I, I could have brought those, but I can't get signed minutes until their next meeting. And okay, and the reason, and, and normally I would have just plotted along and taken the time, but these people want to build an addition on their house, and if we take two months to do the job, they're not going to get the addition this year. So I have pushed everything a little faster than it would normally occur. And, and we haven't gone through dotting every I and crossing every T, for example, of having the written recommendation. But there will be a written recommendation to you, I can guarantee that, uh, 
after the next zoning commission meeting this month. Very good. Thanks. Well, I, I'm, uh, I have no objection to this change. I'm just embarrassed that I didn't see the fine print that we were even talking about this. Okay, well, I, I, in the future, I will make a, a larger effort. Um, I assume when I send an email to trustees that everybody gets the information. And I guess it doesn't always work that way. Um, I, uh, I don't see, I, I can't imagine who else, who might not have heard about this, who would oppose it. Uh, so I do feel comfortable going ahead. Um, it's just, it's kind of a burden. <clears throat> So oh, we need to vote on the project. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion to um, rezone said property from business to R2. I'll second that. Not R2. R1B. 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 Okay. Motion was made and seconded to shift the zoning to R1B. And the address again is? 520 East High Road. 520 East High Road. Okay. There was a guy who was an electrician like 30 years ago who lived there. Yeah, that's on the corner property. Oh, okay. Shall, I, shall we call the roll? We'll move to second. <clears throat> Mr. Crockett? Yeah. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Thank you. Has the uh, uh, BZA hearing for the Weary property been set? Yep. It's on, going to be September 23rd. That's a Thursday at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, just so everybody knows, um, that it's the advertisement for that hearing will be in this week's newspaper. Yeah. The uh, adjoiners have been notified. Um, uh, what is being asked for is another temporary use uh, permit to allow four more Dave Chappelle shows during the month of October. What, what's your plans, if any, since the room capacity has been reduced by half? I, I've, I've worked that out. I talked with, with Steve Haller, our attorney, he said, you have no obligation to provide any amount of space. I mean, it obviously you wouldn't provide no space. But he says, if you're quasi-judicial bodies, does a courtroom, if it's full, postpone the trial? Mm -hmm. No, they, they go on. They, it's, it, there isn't an obligation to, to host everyone who wants to come to a meeting. Um, but it's first come, first serve. Yep. <laughs> More or less. Yep. And as you know, you notice if you ever read these public hearings, if you want to testify That's in advance, job. all you have to do That's is job. write it down and give it to me, and it will be presented. <laughs> so if, if you're concerned about not being able to attend the meeting for whatever reason, you're going to be in Poughkeepsie. You're, 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 <laughs> you're lame and the handicap access door isn't working. Whatever it happens to be, you can still testify in public hearing. Yeah, we got that. Say lame, I mean. Yeah, I don't think that's a common term in Richard. I'm just kidding. I, mean, I don't know if I'm kidding. Um. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah, it has more than one meeting at any rate. But no, that was one in the process of putting this together. The last two times that we had hearings on this issue, we were doing virtual meetings. So we didn't have any concern about about audits. And then when we had the two agraria hearings, we realized that there was a great deal of demand and we did our best to meet that. And fortunately, we only had half a dozen people that didn't fit in the room and they were perfectly happy to stand outside and everything was fine. But at that time, this is the first time I'd ever run into that situation been doing Board of Zoning Appeal meetings 
most of the time there's nobody at them, <laughs> or other than the people <laughs> coming and asking. So this is a whole new world, and that's why I consulted with our legal authority to see what would be appropriate. Yeah. What was this here? Was this a we, the meeting we just had that you called open? Was that a BZA meeting? Or that was just, that was the township voting on what the BZA said? Zoning Commission. The Zoning Commission. This, uh, this zoning Commission re recommendation to okay. change the zoning on that property. And then they came, they had a recommendation you guys voted on. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's, that's totally separate from yeah. the, yeah. the, the, a change in zoning. Mm -hmm. And that can be a change in the map, is the way the terminology goes, which means changing the zoning of a piece of property or properties. Or a change in the code, the, the, the text of the zoning, requires a public hearing by the zoning commission and, and then their recommendation to the trustees. And the trustees, um, if they don't like it, they have, if, and, they, and the Zoning Commission has recommended it, then they have to be unanimous in their contradiction. If they do like it, then it only, you know, if they agree with the Zoning Commission, it only takes two out of three people to, to pass it. Um, but the Bo Board of Zoning Appeals has to do with property owners um, essentially uh, either asking for more clarity on, on a ruling on a ruling on a conditional use or on variances. And we have this one special kind of variance called a temporary use permit, and that's what this case is. If you'd like to do zoning 101, call me up and I'll sit down and go over it with you. <coughs> do you have other things? Oh, yeah. I have some questions of you. Well, let me yeah, let me just finish the regular. Well, we 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 said the board of zoning appeals is is coming up. Um, two permits since the last meeting. One um, on Kyle Road for um, a, a storage building, and one on North Eden Road for a barn. Um, the zoning commission met last month, uh, spent most of the meeting starting to look at, well, that meeting, um, looking at the industrial and business sections of the code and, and deciding what modifications may be appropriate. That was somewhat triggered by the fact that Bruce Parker um, owns the parcel of land next door to the, to the township garage. And which is zoned industrial, and he's kind of pushing the limits of what industrial zoning allows you to do. And, um, and I'm wrestling with, with that whole issue, with, with him and that issue. And, and so I, I introduced that subject to the zoning commission so they'd understand why the code that stands now is, is a little bit vague and a little hard to, to wrestle with. This when it comes to now? business and industry, which we have very little, but we still have it, and we still have to that, that is, his property next to the township property is zoned industrial. Yes. Oh, okay. But that row of, of lots, that plat from the, the Quonset hut on the on the south of its party property now to the village substation. I mean, on the not on the south, on the east, the village substation on the west is zoned industrial. Five, pretty much all the same size lots there. Some of some of the lots have additional property adjoining them behind them. <coughs> Those five lots. You know, I don't. Again, I don't know the history. I, I suppose that it just the, when the zoning came in, that was sort of the general nature of the use of the, of those properties at the time. And so we have that industrial zone. I think a lot of it had to do with the. Uh, the time when YSI first got together and started building on that part of the, city, the village, and the speculation was it would encourage, you know, additional business growth around it. Keep in mind the glass farm was zoned business. Um, it was zoned industrial, yeah, or industrial, whichever, uh, for a while. I'm not sure about Kenny's property, but 
and the Pitt no, State was never in yeah the Pitt State farm on uh, East Eden Road is zoned industrial, um, and so was the Pitt State or the Saunders home site uh, until that was changed a few years ago, quite a few years ago, uh, rezoned from industrial to residential, and um, and the property on the corner, the Brown property, was has been changed back and forth from. It used to be retail at one, at one time. I think business at once, and then they wanted to go back. I'm not sure where we are now. But anyway, so that's that whole area is fluctuated, you know, a lot with very little, very little movement. Yeah, I think I think basically the zoning was put in place at a time where the visions for what were going to happen were very different than what actually has happened. <laughs> so the status right now is there's. You're not sure the property is used, being used, or, or his plans for the property. A little bit of both. I mean, with, if, I mean, I could go into this all in detail, but I'm not but sure. But if there's about, nothing, it's not something that that it's you. Not a current, not a current decision for us to make. No. No, I'm just just saying that's that's part of the work that the zoning commission is is doing right now. Is, is the, well, okay, uh, a reminder that uh, the trustees have, have been invited to the Zoning Commission meeting this month, which is the third Tuesday of the month at 7 o'clock here. And that is what date? The 21st, I believe. <coughs> yes, 21st. Um, and if I, I, you tell me, I probably should put an announcement in the paper saying that if two of you are coming, um, that the trustees are, are meeting with the Zoning Commission. I mean, do we, you're not conducting business. I don't know whether there's an issue with two trustees. Well, wouldn't there be other for a public? Wouldn't there be a public meeting? Public notice of a public meeting of the zoning commission. We well, don't announce the zoning months, commission though. meetings every month in the newspaper. I would think it has a regular schedule. I think it would be a good idea if you did. Well, do, do we announce the trustee meetings every in the newspaper every meeting? I believe we do. No, we don't. We should. Okay, well that's that's another issue that we can we can work on. I just want to know I don't, whether there's a concern about sunshine laws at this meeting. There should be a concern even if the trustees aren't there. All right, well that's a, it's a public body that makes decisions. Yes. That have some binding. And I have have not checked recently. It used to be on the calendar in the news. Yeah, that's um, and I could double check to see if it's still there. Uh, it probably does, if it, informally they know that we're now meeting here rather than at the Bryan Center. Um, and I would like, I, I think it's appropriate that it's announced in the newspaper. The question is whether it needs a display ad every. Oh, no, not a, I don't think an ad. But they, we put out a press release and the newspaper can put it wherever they want. Okay, we can do whatever we want and we can decide what's the most appropriate, but, but let's keep in mind that the only thing legally we are obligated to do is notice on our website and on our bulletin board that we're having a, a public meeting, uh, whether it's within a certain amount of time or whether it's only 24 hours prior. Or, or if there's somebody who is formally requested. Oh, absolutely. Being well, sure. Notice yeah, that's, ongoing. That, yeah, that doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't change. Uh, so, wherever you want to put it, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Okay, I'll I'll do it. I'll do. I don't. I don't think calendar. attendance, participation by trustees doesn't affect that we need to have notice. Okay. <clears throat> That should do it for me. Well, okay, I'm, I, questions. I'm interested in what is the current status of stuff with agraria. 
they have anything pending or we but not in terms of, of any official actions. No. no. Do they have they been approved for a comp a commercial compost operation? That was a long time ago. That they got a licensure from the state and the the it all gets to be a little bit complicated. If you, compost is not one of the things that is spelled out in the, in the de definition of agriculture, but it obviously is a component of agriculture. The issue is it's not whether they're you know, receiving materials and composting them and using them on their property. It would be if they started selling compost. Whether that, and but I think that in, in my mind that one would still count as a agricultural produce, whatever you want to, you want to call it. There's that nothing sold at their farms. There's today. nothing pending. No, there's nothing pending. There's, there's. And I certainly get a lot of comment. There's, as, as if there's something pending. Well, okay, um, I'll, I'll say it one time for the record. I have repeatedly asked the folks at Agraria, specifically Susan, but other people that I've worked with, that any time you start a new activity, would you talk to me about it so that I am aware and I can say this is within the zoning or not within the zoning. There have been many activities that do not qualify under agricultural zoning at Agraria, and there have been many activities that do. But I do not get any cooperation from Agraria in terms of planning. The, I'm, I, this is something, it's, it's a challenge. Um, generally speaking, the, the zoning department, my my position, I don't go looking for problems. On the other hand, when something is as public as agraria is, it's awkward to ignore abuse of the zoning. Dealing with it is a challenge because agraria is incredibly popular. Right? So. Um, among participants, not incredibly popular among the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And the neighbors are who I worked for. So that's my challenge and dilemma. And I'm, um, I, I keep thinking about what is the most effective way of, of going about it. And I'm happy to hear any counsel, anyone. I uh, would like to offer. <coughs> but at the moment, there's nothing current. Nothing, no, there's no official requests um, or, or any kind of permits or, or, or anything else. The last official business was the, the um, hearing the, with the BZA asking for um, agritourism uses. There were two specific things that were asked for. One was approved and one was denied. Yeah, really and re could remind us one which was approved. Well, denied was using essentially using the barn for events mm -hmm. and approved <coughs> was allowing them to rent their conference center out once a month. Their meeting room, their the meeting library, room, whatever. I, I, yeah. I don't know what the term was on the application I had to make. Um, <coughs> there are other zoning questions? Uh, we have new business and old business. Understood why well, we have new business before old business, but new business. Um, 
citizens from Mills Lawn Green Space. Yeah, I. Anyone want to make any comments? I, as chairman, are you going to write them a response? Where's the letter? I would guess it's on the table of correspondence. Yep. It's in there. And I believe they wanted a response within a, a day or so. I don't remember the specifics of it. As a candidate for office, I've received comment or questions, but I don't know what would we have to do to say to them. I'm How paraphrasing what they they're asking for, but I think it is is it's a statement of uh, desire, for lack of a better word, from the board of trustees as to uh, how we feel the best use of uh, Mills Lawn is in the future. I don't mean the, the structure, I mean the property. I don't mean the structure on the property, property without structure. Well, the original gift by the college was to the Miami Township School Board, which really isn't isn't us, wasn't us. I don't see how we have a specific uh, jurisdiction or we certainly do not have jurisdiction, but we, solely we, because we could we could express an opinion if we wanted to. I think that's what they're asking for. It's an opinion. Does anyone want to? You just need to read the letter. And see what it says. I'm sure I read I read it, but okay. I, I didn't think of it as relevant. All right, uh, I'm just saying they asked for a written response by this week, I think. Does anyone want to, to uh, address this issue? As, as chairman, I would think it would be your your decision to address it or not. Uh, I don't think it's in our uh, purview. I have a personal opinion, and I've expressed it to them as a candidate. Well, then let's move on. What else we got? Uh, old business, Kingwood. Oh, that's yours. Yeah. Yes, which I'll jump on. But will there be any other? The Margaret, the, the one at the top is that is that the one that's been sitting on the table for a long time? The the Potter Board's copy of the Kingwood Civil Entry application. Is that the one that had the DVD and the thumb drive and? Uh, I don't think so. I think no. This is a more recent. One. Well, it's, it's, it's something still, it's the same. It it's, it's, it. it's basically the same subject. Yeah, I think so. It's oh. the same thing. It's just that um, uh, I think we got it to copy. From. And at the top is MBRPC annual. Sir, which is you. No, he's talking about. Second one. He's talking about the, how power, power siding board um, copy copy. It's just the 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 power the siding board sent us a copy of the uh, the. Um, the application. Well, let me just give you update. Weekly, a uh, representative of Cedarville, Xenia, and Miami Township have been trying to meet. We've had three, three meetings. Um, uh, and also, at the last session, the county administrator was also there. Uh, is that Brandon Huddleston? Yeah, Brandon Huddleston was there. Uh, separately, the attorneys of the townships and the county uh, had a brainstorming session. And this is to no conclusions, uh, we're meeting again a week from today. Uh, however, the drum is beginning to beat. Um, I don't remember the exact date, but the middle of November, actually Jennifer, you probably do know, <coughs> there will be the... 1-5, uh, that must be 15. <laughs> on November 15th uh, at the fairgrounds there'll be or actually Jennifer would you like to describe the opportunity there uh, sure so the 
first official hearing that the OPSB holds is the public hearing. Um, it, it is November 15th at 6 p.m. at the county fairgrounds in the assembly hall. Um, it is not a, how do I describe it? It's, it's a public hearing, but it is a little bit formal. It's not excessively formal, but it is a little bit formal. Um, they'll have a court reporter there who basically keeps track of what everyone says. Um, so folks can show up with written, written statements and they can give those statements um, and it'll be recorded uh, officially for the record. That's what it is. That's the first hearing that's been scheduled. Uh, and then, tentatively, the uh, Power Siding Board will have the big one, the big hearing, is it December 13th? That's when it starts. Uh, it, that may get postponed, but at the moment that's on the schedule. Uh, in Columbus? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, attorneys from Vesper, the company that is planning the Kingwood Solar, have contacted each of the townships asking uh, to talk, and each of the townships has said uh, not yet. And so, the thought is after this meeting on the 15th, or next meeting of the three townships, we will ask them if they are ready to meet with the three townships together uh, to talk about details of uh, how to make the, their proposal better. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really just getting up to speed. What will happen in the next two months? We'll see. So <clears throat> probably not this coming, the next, our next trustees meeting, but the one after that, I'll have uh, much more detail and we'll have some discussion and maybe some expression of group opinion. Any questions or things you'd like to <coughs> nudge me on? Will that be the second meeting in Will that be the second meeting in First meeting. I'm not hearing all about this, but if I'm not hearing everything through this. Today was an exception, but we're meeting Wednesday, every Wednesday is our pattern. I thought you I thought you were saying uh, in one of the follow up township meetings yes. that you would have some is which meeting is that? Will that be the First or second meeting in October? Where are we at? What day oh, is this? We'll oh, still be in September. This is the first meeting in September. <laughs> it's early September still. So first it'll October. be like the first Monday the 20th? Is our next meeting. No, that's the next meeting, but you said it would be two meetings away. Yeah. It would be the first meeting in October. First okay. meeting in October? Okay. <clears throat> I, don't, I, yeah, I don't think we'll have a whole lot of hard nuggets. Yeah, I think it'll be in October, yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so is that a public meeting? Or? Is this the regular the trustee? Is it our trustee? Yeah. <coughs> okay. I mean, there's a whole range of, of, of issues. Drainage, setback, visibility, uh, that kind of thing. I mean, do we want to take a position on how many foot setback? Do we want to take a position on? Uh, I'm afraid no one knows where the bedrock is. Mm -hmm. do we, do we, this could become a huge, for the developer, it could become a huge nightmare because they haven't thought about the bedrock. I don't know. And I can't find maps of the bedrock. Does anyone really well, I, I don't know if my map extends that far or not, but I have one. There are soil maps. I don't have a bedrock map. You do? I would like to look at that. <coughs> that would be very helpful. 
Can I request a copy of that too? Is that like public? It, it, this is, I got it from the geology department of Antioch College many years ago. Um, it's, it's, it's the same as the, as the USGS quadrangle, but it's got contours of the bedrock. This, that, that, this, this could be gold. I mean, I, I'm sure the developer wants this. If they don't already. I'll, 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 I'll share with anybody. Yeah, the rock can't change. change. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 those kinds of maps are assembled from well data, basically. You know, every time someone digs a hole down the bedrock, they well, get, you know, and most of that. So it takes quite a while to put it all together, but the raw information is still. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it would be updating continually. Yeah, so this hasn't been updated for but some time. Part of what we're running into is there are, you know, a myriad of different agencies and interests that have concerns and data, but no jurisdiction. And, and you know, <coughs> who's making them get together and you know, tell each other information? <coughs> uh, Well, this will this will get hot for about a month in, in November, and then we'll see what happens. I'll dig up my map and see what the possibilities are for duplicating. You know what's up. What's the charge? You're gonna. Well, I'm looking for the the, the the map I have of bedrock contours includes that area, and if it, if it does, I'll share it. However. Yeah. You know, take a photograph of it and, and email it. Or that would be great. Would you make a map? Is it Richard Hughes map sales? <laughs> yeah. I can pay for some copies of it. No, yeah, copies I'm not. I'm not worried about it. But the important thing is, I go in and I find it among the pile of maps, and uh, and that it is, as I say, I can't remember what the bound. I think it's the Yellow Springs quadrangle, right? Which probably includes at least some of that. Some of that. Um, other information, other new business? You, you look like you'd like to say something. Well, along with this um, notification you got from the OPSB, I think it did specify that they basically approved everyone's requests for intervention um, to include the Farm Bureau, but I, I think that was basically that was basically it. And CGA, because we have so many members, we're we're obviously going to consolidate testimony and things like that. So the law judge basically went through and looked at all the requests that they had received and has now approved all of those. And I don't think there are any outstanding. That's all I've got. Uh, two, two things left, if that's all right. Um, mm -hmm. Did I understand that the YSDC had an emergency meeting not too long ago? Yes. Oh, is there anything that you could uh, sure. enlighten us about? Uh, I, I, could, I could do it next meeting, but I could do it now. Uh, the uh, Yellow Springs Community Foundation has authorized a $200,000 line of credit if uh, YSDC uh, takes on the Wellness Center. Uh, and that, that line of credit is underwritten by um, impact investors, not donors to the foundation. Mm -hmm. But as I understand it, I, I could be wrong on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Seems like there was another topic there. <coughs> but but the, the hot thing is progress on the Wellness Center. And there are... Uh, so did YSDC vote to accept that letter, that, that arrangement that the meeting was about? Or? It's about Mills Lawn. The special meeting was about Mills Lawn. The emergency meeting? Mm-hmm. I was there, I don't remember it being that way. There are three motions that were... Okay, repeat, please. <laughs>
Um, there was an ex ex was it 12:30 on last Thursday? Yes. Yes. And it's there like was 30 an executive minutes long. Yeah, executive session came out of the executive session, and there were three motions that um, were voted on. The first was to accept a request from the school board or the district to enter in a partnership to look at how Mills Lawn property might be used if the levies passed and then the K-12 schools built. And the second was to um, accept direct grant from through the Community Foundation to help pay for making that happen. And the third was to form a subcommittee to start exploring. It'll be in the paper this week. <laughs> I was there. I don't remember that detail at all. Uh, there was there was no commitment of action. What I remember was wellness center. That's what I'm focused on. You're on that committee, too, aren't you? You're on this wellness subcommittee. On the wellness subcommittee, mm -hmm. not not on. No. Uh, the wellness subcommittee. Yeah, the. the the school has laid out ways that things might go uh, around Mills Lawn if the uh, school passes. Thank you for better excuse information. Me, excuse me. <laughs> My second question Jeff was, uh, Richard, have you got a copy of the minutes, the thousand dollar minutes from the the agraria. Uh, I had the transcript. You do have it? Yeah. From the court reporter? Yeah. Is it electronic? You, yeah. You I, mean, I, have it, I could print it out if you want. It's a, well, you, you promised to send it to me. I did. At least I thought I did. Would you do it again? All right. Please. Do it again. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I had, Mr. Chairman. Good. I'm really embarrassed that I don't remember that what you just said about. <laughs> Mills Lawn and It'll come back to see at all. <coughs> Other topics, new business? I have none. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved.